So if you're anything like me, you actually prefer to have a monitor when you're filming video because a three inch screen just isn't enough sometimes. And this is one thing that I recommend a lot of people get, especially when they start videography, solely for videography. Photography, you don't need a monitor, obviously. But trying to compose your shot, trying to make sure things are in focus on a three inch screen it's just not feasible, it's not great. It's probably not the most optimal thing that you should be doing when it comes to videography. And this is one thing that you really do need to invest in. Whether you're pairing your phone up and trying to utilize you know, the, your phone as a monitor, which I don't recommend because sometimes you actually need your phone for other things, buying a really cheap monitor is a good idea. And I've tested monitors from expensive monitors to cheap monitors. And uh, literally right here, I've literally tested all these monitors, you know, the cove go from expensive to cheap, all those kind of things. And this is what I'm here for to try and coach you guys and give you my opinion on what is actually good. And the one I've been using is this one right here. This is the new Port Keys PT6. And it's a very interesting one. I've got uh, a larger Port Keys one that I generally use, the HS7T with my FX6, but, uh, been using this one as well with my a7 IV, but this one could be my newest one for the a7 IV, and we really need to know if this is any good or not, and some of the best features about this thing. Now, this is the one right here. This is the Portkeys PT6. Now, essentially, uh, this is a 5.2 inch monitor, and look at the size of this thing. It is so much smaller than other five inch monitors because essentially, it's quite bezel-less. That is probably one of the biggest benefits of this screen right here. There's no fan in it as well, so you're not gonna have any fan noise because uh, you know the nit count in terms of the output isn't that high, so it's not gonna generate too much heat. But for about 169 bucks, this is something to consider. Let's have a look at some of the specs right now. So the Portkeys PT6 is combined with an ultra thin 5.2 inch UHD touchscreen with the professional live streaming tools built in with up to 600 nits. It is a sharp 100% of DCI-P3 color gamut IPS screen. It has anti fingerprint coating, a HDMI input of 4K 30 frames per second, and a HDMI output of 1080p at 60 frames per second. It has peaking, wireframe protection, image crop, anamorphic lens calibration, RE false color, 3D LUTs, RGB waveform, and so much more. So in the box, you get the monitor, you get a HDMI cord, you get the sun guard, which you can actually have the attachments with it, a monitor mount, all in a relatively hard Pelican style case. And the total price of this is about 169 US. The anamorphic mode is probably one of the biggest reasons why I like this one, because you can absolutely dial it in. I've got the Sure lenses, which would, Okay, so I've got the Suray lenses, which are the 1.33 times anamorphic. Now this one's for the APS-C range, also got the 1.6 times anamorphic for the full frame, and some monitors will have the squeeze factor with these, but if you put that 1.25 anamorphic adapter for Suray, that changes the squeeze factor, and I think it's like a 1.66 or something, and you really need to try and dial it in so you can actually see what you're probably going to see in post, and then you're able to frame it up a lot better in camera and not screw up. So if you put the, let's have a, now, you throw this 1.25 times adapter, like I said just before, onto this 1.33, you've got about a 1.66 times squeeze. Now, not a lot of monitors will have a 1.66 times squeeze in there, and uh, that's the great thing about the Port Keys PT6 is that you can dial it in to that exact point, 1.66, and you'll be able to frame it up in your camera so much better. That's, ah, every monitor should have this. So many more features that we need to talk about. Now, there are a couple of things when I actually had this on the FX6, and uh, it's essentially it doesn't really affect the FX6 because the loading the LUTs onto here are extremely important because if you do actually uh, have something like my LUT, which I've loaded onto here, you can get the look directly 
into this of what it would actually look like in post-production. That is very handy. And the FX6 has, you know, the ability to load your LUTs in, FX3, FX30, but the A7 IV that I'm filming on right now, this would be perfect because you have that ability to load the LUTs into here and you can't load the LUTs into the A7 IV. And when it comes to outdoor shooting, you actually have this. So that is a big thing when it comes to this is that there is no fan, so there's no, not gonna be any noise like this one right here. is so loud when you're actually filming, especially when I'm using this for filming my podcast. You don't want a loud fan coming through your podcaster mics. It's just not, it's not nice. It's to have a fan on set, you want it to be quiet and that one's not quiet, whereas this one doesn't have a fan because it doesn't generate much heat. But the 600 nits is not that bright in comparison to, you know, the 1200 nit one or the 2200 nit one. But having this on here that's included into the box will actually just darken everything around. You're able to see it better and you don't actually need it that bright. And I filmed with the FX6 a full Land Cruiser event day. No worries with this thing. And it was just, it was a breeze. It was a breeze to use. The user interface is so good. So one of the biggest reasons why it actually has a more dim screen and no fan essentially is because it doesn't generate as much heat. But uh, how dim is this screen in compared to the HS7T and the other port keys monitor? Because is 600 nits, you know, good enough compared to a 1200 nit monitor? Like, is there actually a big difference between these two? So you can actually see between these three port keys monitors, you've got the PT6 on the left, in the middle, the LH5P Mark II, and on the right is the HS7T, which is the seven inch monitor. Now, the one in the middle is actually meant to be 2200 nits. PT6 on the left is 600 nits, and the HS7T is 1200 nits. There isn't too much of a difference, but you can definitely tell that the one in the middle is actually brighter here, which is meant to be 2200 nits, but there isn't too much of a difference when it's the 600 nits compared to the 2200 and the 1200 nit monitors. Now, if you're anything like me and you use a lot of manual lenses or you use the anamorphic lenses, it actually is very difficult to do manual focus pulls on this, specifically on the anamorphic lenses. But the great thing about this user interface is that when it comes to the focus peaking, you can actually turn to grayscale when it comes to the image and uh, a few different settings there as well, depending on what the uh, contrast levels are on this but it actually makes it easier to focus because your red or your green, blue, whatever color you choose for that focus peaking stands out so much more. You can turn the intensity down, which gives you more of an accurate focus pull or focus a uh, specific area. And it just makes it so much easier. It's so good to actually utilize that in this. And manual lenses literally become a breeze. Now, in terms of monitoring, the great thing is with this one is that you can actually adjust how the image actually looks. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast, the chroma, sharpness, tint, color temperature, and obviously the backlight strength and intensity. So that is really good if you want you know, to change the way that the image actually looks that's perfectly fine. Just remember that it is a monitoring screen, but if you do HDMI out, this is what's actually going to be displayed on a screen. So if you are actually broadcasting it, this is the final image that you're actually going to see. So loading that LUT into here, and if you're gonna be broadcasting this image, this is what they're going to see. So essentially, if you are going to be doing this with live streaming and into a live streaming software like StreamYard, all you need to do is just connect it to your computer through that HDMI out, and that's going to bake in the LUT and give you that look in StreamYard because there are some softwares out there that don't actually convert the LUT, and if you're shooting an S-Log3, it could be a fully desaturated image, and that can be a very big problem if you're not able Able to display the LUT in that live streaming. So it is really good to have those small adjustments in the tint and the contrast levels and all those kind of things. 
So the overall user interface is pretty easy. All you need to do is swipe across and you can go through to a whole bunch of settings. You've got focus peaking, you've got stretch legs, waveforms, audio, 3D LUTs, all those kind of things. And then you can click on each individual one and they have drop down menus as well, which enables you to customize it in your own way to suit your style of shooting. Okay. Now this is one of the most strangest features I've ever seen on a monitor hands down. I can understand what the uses and the applications are for when it comes to live broadcasting and vertical content. Now if you are you know, filming on Instagram, a live Instagram video, streaming on some sort of nine by 16 format where you're actually doing vertical shooting, this is really interesting. You have to see this. You can actually stretch someone's legs to make them look taller, make them look like they have longer legs. So you can move that start line up or down depending on where I guess your hips or wherever you want to extend uh, further. And then the vertical extension is where you can actually make their legs look longer. Now, how weird is that? I can understand the practical applications of this, but uh, at least you have that feature there, right? I mean, I don't have that issue because I'm six foot four, so I'm pretty tall, but uh, I don't need to stretch my legs. If anything, I need to compress my legs, and uh, there is no reverses of that, but I don't know. It could be a good use case for something. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that is it for the PT6. Now I do have the LH5P Mark II coming out soon. Now this video shows a little bit more into the user interface and they are pretty much the same when it comes to what you get inside here. This one you can actually hit record on the monitor which I've been using with my a7 IV. It's compatible with a whole bunch of other cameras and camera systems, Canon, uh, Panasonic, all those kind of things. You can check the link in the description below if you want to check this one out. Also, link in the description below if you want to check this one out because it is, look at a super low bezel. These uh, look completely different. Same manufacturers and same with the LH. Oof. This one, the PT, the HS7T. I'm getting mixed up with the LH5 P Mark II, PT6, HS7T. There's so many different numbers and letters, combinations. Port keys are just doing some really good things when it comes to the monitors. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. That'd be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.